greetings and salutations. Welcome back to Kind of Funny Games. Kevin, what are we calling this? PlayStation, uh, PSX, I love you, XOXO. PSX, I love you, XOXO. Thank you, Kevin. Very clever. That's a Greg Miller joint. Too clever for me. Super. Uh, I'm Colin Moriarty, as you know. I'm joined here by one of my very favorite people in all the land, Christian Phillips, head of Sony San Diego. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. It is hot as hell in here, is it not? It's uh, it's a little warm. Balmy. You're down Balmy. there. In, you're yes. down there in San Diego, though. You're a little more used to it, I think, than we are up here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, you, it, 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 the humidity here, though, I'm, I'm feeling a little Miami right now. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're, you're right. It's, it's a little, little more, more Miami right. or Atlanta. Yeah, southeast United States. Right. Uh, Christian, I just saw you, like, last month. We were at the studio. You were kind enough to have us down to see uh, Killstrain do a, a, a live stream of that. We did Colin and Greg Live, which was, you know, heinously stupid as usual. Uh, yeah, it was great. How's everything going down there? Everything good? Yeah, no, things are going really well, coming together really nicely. You know, we've got a great presence here at PlayStation Experience. Um, downstairs, uh, the, you know, here in the convention center, we've got Killstrain. We had five members of uh, our community show up in full cosplay. Awesome. Uh, walk around down there, we've got Drawn to Death and David Jaffe's down there. Um, Interacting, rubbing elbows with uh, the fans, and then of course we got Guns Up that you know Scott Rohde announced on the stage today. And happy as I'm refreshing on my phone the the player counts, people are downloading it, awesome. playing it. So awesome. we're really excited. Yeah, things are going well. So the common theme between these games is they're all free to play, and this seems to be your right. charge at yes. Sony San Diego right now. Are and and it seems like you've fully embraced it. How how has that been going for you guys so far in terms of? kind of nerves a little shot about how this is going to work out? Are you confident that this kind of cycle is going to work for you? Well, game development, so I'm always nervous, right? I, I, um, just nervous for different reasons. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, in San Diego, um, you know, I guess it, it really all flows for me. I'm a bit of a Don Quixote, if you will, and I like tilting at crazy windmills. And I decided free to play about four years ago. Um, free to play was a windmill I wanted to tilt. That you know, it has such a negative connotation, the phrase at times with some people. That I think is you know unfortunate because there are great games out there. Uh, and I just decided, you know what? Why don't we help? define what that means in the PlayStation universe. And so, I don't know any other way to be than all in. Right. So we've got the, the three titles that are all, yeah, using that business model, but we're not shoehorning it in. It's not a formula where they all have to match and have to be designed and monetize the exact same way. Uh, what we did is what we always do, start off just trying to build great games, and then the business model happens to be free to play. That was a question I was asking Scott before in terms of you kind of have to lead with great games, right, Absolutely. to make this work. You can't just put like a, like a shitty no. game out and be like, well... Yeah. So, I mean, is that the idea to say, like, we really could maybe charge twenty nine ninety nine for Drawn to Death, but we have to have a game like that to prove the point. Absolutely. You know, it, during the keynote after Scott announced, you know, I was, you know, because I'm a glutton for punishment, I was looking to see what, you know, viewers were commenting and more than one was like, you know what, just charge $14.99 and get it over with, right? And that's a great thing to see people commenting because it means that they see that there's a value in that game. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, so, and, and you know this um, about us, just in general at, at Sony, is that we're in the craft of making games, you know? Um, I wish Greg was here. I wanted to give him a little hug for that, yeah, I don't know where that amazing is. speech. Oh, that excellent, he gave. wasn't it? Oh, he, he blew won. us all away. We didn't, none of us knew we were going to do it. Yeah, gonna do I told him he won the internet, man. Oh, that, yeah. uh, it, it was just, it, it was, he phrased it beautifully. And, and you know, and that's why, that's why we do this. This is why we work all through Thanksgiving to get guns up ready and, and missed out on holiday, you know, with family. Because we want a great game. It's, and if that's not there, then why are we doing it? Right. And how is how are you guys kind of measuring success with this particular initiative? Is it is it through obviously I mean there's a financial gain of doing it like this, but is it also measured in be, making people more comfortable with the idea of free to play on PlayStation? Is, is is it more to say like these games are critically great? Let's assume and right. maybe they don't break even, but we have the formula and let's keep going. Is that more the, the measurement? Yeah, I mean you know uh, definitely on a mission to win hearts and minds uh, to steal phrases from uh, others. But yeah, it, you know, it's about consumption by the community like, and acceptance by the community in terms of 
it being a quality title. I'd be thrilled if we had a half million people playing Guns Up, and you know, I'm sure Scott would hate to hear me say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. And they never gave us a dime. They just played the game and they played it religiously, and it was a, a part of their daily routine. Right. I know it is for me. I, Guns Up in particular is a game that I chased for four years. I mentioned that when you guys right. were down uh, visiting with us, that you know, uh, I saw it very early on when it was gonna be a very different type of game in terms of depth of gameplay. It was more aimed and tailored to the mobile space. Um, and then working with Valkyrie, we helped them get to the point where what we were really building was a proper PlayStation 4 title. And one that's gonna give people a really rich experience. And we're hoping that that, you know, and, and it's a learning process for us, so, you know, it, that's the great thing about this business model is we can keep iterating and we can keep improving. So Guns Up will continually get um, better and better for users and their experience with it. And then what we learn the, from the mistakes that we made on Guns, because, you know, hey, we're going to make mistakes. Um, it, it is development for a reason. Um, will benefit uh, John to death, right? And, and Kill Strain that are, you know, further along in the pipeline. Or for the back of the pipeline. Right. Yeah. So you do have this kind of going on that I think is going to be responsible, I think, for a lot of your coming out party in yep. terms of a studio and maybe a new identity or a different identity. But you already have an identity also with LLB, yes. uh, which is a really extremely talented and I think uh, under-recognized, maybe woefully under-recognized team that, yeah. that cranks this game out nine, ten months. Uh, Two years in a row, uh, Keeley left us out of that category of at least being nominated, right? So, uh, and it's I unfortunate. Think people seem to really like have a passion for this game. So, what's going on with that team? I mean, we saw a little bit of the game today. Um, yes. But, but what? What? They? I'll never forget coming down to Sony San Diego the first time and seeing a mattress in someone's uh, in someone's Cutler, office, the director's office. Which I was like, this is remarkable. These guys really kill themselves over these games. Yeah. So, what's going on with that team? How are they doing? Uh, they're doing great. Um, they're they're working hard. It, it, a lot of great new features coming on. We we teased a little bit there at the end of the trailer. Showed some images. So you know, stay tuned. We've got more stuff coming. More announcements coming about um, the show 16. Uh, but the team just keeps you know cranking out a triple A title. And, and the fact that they're able to do it, able to bring new features, able to add polish to existing features, able to you know strengthen subsystems within the game, improving it. You know, we know online isn't where you know online play isn't where we want it to be yet. And we hear the fans, and we continue to work and iterate on it. Um, so every year, every nine months, they turn around an impressive product. And I'm really excited for the show 16. It's coming along beautifully. And uh, I, I guess I'm kind of curious. I asked you this when, we, when I wrote History of Sony San Diego years ago. Yeah. And I'm curious again, you guys used to work on an NBA game. Yes. Um, is there, it, you guys have sports bona fides. You guys understand baseball, at least, and, and it can attract talent that might understand basketball or hockey, whatever it would be. Sure. Is there a desire to make Sony San Diego, at least this part of the studio, away from the free-to-play, kind of more hardcore games, uh, maybe more of a sports hub? Are you guys interested in, in it chasing the NFL license? Do you guys want an NBA license? I mean, is that something you are, like consider at all? Uh, so, consider it all, absolutely. I, you know, I think that it's... A, well, and I think I know. It's it, it's definitely a topic that that comes up for us every year when, when we think about what direction we're going to go as a studio and where are we going to grow and what products we want to add to the studio's portfolio. But I mean, I think I think the landscape of sports games has really changed uh, from the PlayStation Two days. I think you know on PlayStation Two, uh, sports really commanded a much bigger. Um, presence and share, and there was room for multiple publishers. Uh, I think that what we've seen um, then with you know the PlayStation 3 generation is shooters took that role, and they really took took the forefront in sports and, and even racing to some extent. Kind of, you know, were you know maybe the number two or three choice when someone was like, okay, what three games do I need to have, right? They would go, I need a first-person shooter and then a sports and a racing title. And the way things are shaking out, I mean, we see that, you know, in the basketball space, NBA 2K is really doing a fantastic job. I mean, my hat off to them, you know. Uh, 
I'm glad that they're focusing on that and not baseball. Um, we own the baseball space, and and I think that there's a real opportunity for us to continue to deliver there. I think I think that there's still a lot of room for growth with baseball, helping people understand that there's this amazing product that they can that they can enjoy that they don't necessarily need to be a die-hard baseball fan to really appreciate the hard work and, and the fun that can be had playing the show. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm always impressed with that team. I don't I don't know, it's just it's so fun to watch them work and and people that were really into that game always comment that something meaningful happened to them this year that they changed something or whatever and I know like you said you're focusing on online which I think is one of the complaints people have but uh, you know congratulations to those guys because I, I think they're some of the hardest working guys I've ever seen in the, in the industry. Yeah no I've, I've had the pleasure of uh, and privilege of working with a lot of teams but that team is an incredibly focused and talented team that really gives blood sweat and tears and to the point you were making I mean you know Chris Cutliffe's the director of development for that team you know, he's been making PlayStation games probably long, you know, first party titles about as long as anybody else in the company. Definitely, you know, given that they're annualized, shipped probably more than any other producer. Um, and he's the one with the air mattress that, you know, he's an old guy like me, you know, mid 40s, and he's still crunching and yep. putting in the hours and sleeping at the office because. He cares that much. Yeah, he's passionate. Yeah, yeah. You can see that. that and I haven't seen him in a while, but uh, yeah. I see Ramon more. Right. He's got a lot of passion as well. Yes. Um, well, Christian, I appreciate you very much. You're welcome with us anytime. You know that. Uh, on PS, I love you. Uh, love it. Kind of funny games. Keep kind of you know twirling around there on the videos. We have a bunch of interviews here from PSX. Uh, and uh, I do want to thank you guys. Yeah. You got me. You got me a nice chunk of followers. So thank you. Oh. Um, I'll take some more. But. Thanks for that shout out. Oh, no, my pleasure. Yeah. I still think you guys are way under the radar. I don't think that's going to be that way for long. So be there while it's still cool, because then you're just going to be a follower. That's right. All right, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Peace.